the way they were shooting threes. It, you know, it was one thing to have Tatum go off tonight. It's one thing to have, like, your superstar just knock down every single shot that they take. It's everybody else, man. It's the wide open threes for Derek White, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard. The list goes on. Like, come on, man. Where is that perimeter defense? That I mean, this is just one of the many, like, critiques I have of this game so far. I know that it's one out of 82. We got 81 more games to go, but the three-point shooting, man. I mean, a Tom thibodeau team has always been questionable when it comes to guarding threes, but tonight was just on another level. I don't know if it was just... You know, there's some teams that get just hot that really just feel get into a rhythm and that this is just an anomaly. Like, they shot, what, 58, 60% from downtown tonight? Yeah. Something along those they, lines? They, they cooled off and they ended up oh. shooting uh, 47.5 oh, oh, from 3 -2. Oh, at one point in yeah. the first half it was 60. So, yeah. you know, yeah. hopefully this is just like one of those games where it's an anomaly. It's like everyone's just hitting on all cylinders, but not a good showing defensively for a team that has made their mark in the league the last couple of seasons being a defensive stopper. So I didn't like that part of this game whatsoever. Listen, and 47% because they took like a thousand threes in the fourth quarter trying to go for the record. Oh my so God, it was embarrassing. I don't even know if that number is actually legit. Um, listen, it's only one game, but I, I, I'm slightly disappointed. I am disappointed. And the reason I'm a little disappointed, it's only one game, but because of the way the game played out, it's like not that the Celtics needed any more confidence that they already have as the defending champs, but they do come out of tonight, I feel like, oh, that's the Knicks? Oh, this this is what the talk was about? This was the acquisitions about? This is what we were have, we had to be worried about? I think as champs, you always have confidence to play against anyone. But I think after tonight, I think the Celtics have even more confidence in future matchups against the Knicks, which I think makes even our journey to, you know, beat them makes it much more difficult. They got a test tonight against the champs. Yeah, I, my best mean? friend is a Celtics fan. My boss is a Celtics fan. And you know I talk the talk. So I'm, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow because you already yeah. know I speak a big game. So... I, I agree with you, JD. I think that their confidence boost went through the roof, not that they needed it. Um, but we shot better than them from the field. So to shoot 5% better than them from the field and still lose can only mathematically happen when you're not doing anything from behind the arc and the other team is killing from behind the arc. And that was an embarrassment. And to JD's point, I bet if you look at their three-point percentage and just take out those last four minutes, it's, it's well above 60%. That was an embarrassment. I didn't think our defense would be a reason for a blowout this evening. That's not what I expected. If we want to reroute immediately into optimism, we yeah. can start the conversation with Deuce McBride. Deuce. Oh, we want to go there. The Deuce was loose tonight, JD, man. that's your guy. That was JD's guy. The Deuce was loose tonight. He did it. And, you know, with the bench being the story, we wanted to see who was going to step up, at, and especially with the absence of DiVincenzo, who we were expecting to fill that bench void. McBride, 8 of 10. He started off 7 of 7 from the field. 22 points, two dimes. The thing that I liked about McBride that you feel like is, is impressive and will certainly carry over is a lot of those weren't wide open. No, they weren't. McBride was creating shots under duress. There was a lot going on there. Mc, he was not in the, on the road. Yes. And he was knocking them down. There's the positive you can take for the rest of the season, man. Deuce McBride is here, bro. Deuce McBride, my God. I mean, when you're watching Deuce tonight, how can you not be excited for what this guy is bringing off the bench? But, CP, to add on to your point, it's not, you know, all the shots were like, highly contested. it's like, as you said, how he was doing, the side steps, the step backs. The other thing that I was really impressed with is that he's tacking the rim. Like, he's looking to try to finish around the rim at this point. This is something that he struggled with last season. So now that you're telling me that he's adding all three levels to his game where you're seeing mid-range, three-pointer, attacking. It's just stuff that you love about Deuce McBride. And I know JD's smiling at these numbers right now. Eight <laughs> of ten. Eight of ten from the field. Four or five from downtown. Two or three from the free, from the free throw line. Look at this yeah. guy, man. Look at the growth. Look at the growth of this player, CB. <laughs> I'm going to challenge Mikel Bridges. I talked about in the pregame. Yeah, let's talk about it. He did not have a great year last year as a defender. You know, with the Brooklyn Nets. And I was looking forward to the matchup tonight. And defense, 
you know, the offense I can excuse. Offensive chemistry, you can excuse. Offensive, anything offensively because it takes more than one player. But when you're a defender, you you wake up, you get off the bed, and you can play defense. That's like that that's that, that doesn't go away. And sometimes you don't even need a scheme to be a good defender if you already are a good individual defender. Scheme just helps you elevate. I was very disappointed on his one-on-one -on -one defense tonight. Mm. Uh, some of these shots that Tatum got were too he easy. Him up. He him up. Too easy. And I know the counter could be, well, Tatum's a great player. Yes, but Mikel is supposed to be a great defender too. And that's all I'm saying is I expected a little more effort of from a him. And a little bit more of a challenge defensively. Yeah. And it was just too easy. It was too soft. And it's not going to be good enough long term. It's one game. But I'm talking about individually, I was disappointed yeah. in his one-on-one -on -one defense. As defensively, offensively is where the moans and groans came from, oh uh, from the watch God. party. 0 for 5 for McCall Bridges in the first half. Second half, he got it back. It looked like the hits was going from the shot. Yeah, it was a completely different shot. Went what seven, happened here, man? Right. What was going on here? Went seven of eight from the field in the second he half. He went to the locker room and fixed that. I went yeah. to the bathroom. I hear Slate erupt. I'm like, I the bet Mikhail Bridges hit. hit a shot. Sure the enough. first three hit. So, I mean, it's just, I, I, I still don't understand. I would love to have a former player or shot doctor here to understand why he decided to do this at this point in the season to switch the shot up because he's vital for this team. We talked about it. Mikal Bridges, to me, is going to be the most important player for this Knicks success going forward. He has to be a 20-point scorer a night and not just be a guy that's going to be supporting cast. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to play off of Brunson. He's got to be that guy. Second half, he showed a little bit more than the first half. First half was abomination. He definitely got more comfortable in the second half, but to add on, it's it's the price that you paid for Bridges that yeah. is really going to amplify the moans and groans even moving forward after this one game because it's nice to see that he got comfortable in the second half, but you can't just play that moving forward like, oh, I'll just give me a little bit in the game and then I get comfortable. You got to start the game off off the rip being a dog. Like, yeah. you got to come out defensively as JD's talking about the CPS you're talking about just being an offensive guy like he is in the top three of the pecking order of having to be that type of creator it's nice that he's seeing it, to see that he tried to do that it's nice to see that he was cutting to the basket and that's honestly another issue I have with this team if, if I'm going to just pivot for a second it was only really Brunson trying to break down the defense you know th this is something I talked about this preseason when we traded for Cat, and I know I got a lot of pushback. I got a lot of pushback for it, and I know what- Why are you looking at me? I, I, you know why I'm looking at you. Uh, uh, so anyway, you know, this is where you need another creator, another guy who's gonna force the double and triple teams who can just, you know, someone that, something like Randall that what he was doing last season. And I'm not saying that he was the most perfect guy, but the thing is that that guy created a lot more open Don't looks. Don't you start having seller's remorse. I'm not having seller's remorse. I'm just saying what it is. I'm just saying that it didn't have to be Randall, but if you're going to get somebody, if you're going you're gonna to need another guy to create, to create those open looks Break from perimeter. Down that because as we saw tonight, relying it on Brunson, our three-point shots weren't there because they weren't open. And that's the one thing you can say having somebody like Randall did. Now, it's the counter saying, all right, Kat, instead of being out in the perimeter, we start you on the paint. Yeah. So that way we get the, the double and the triple teams moving yeah. forward. Because that's something well, that needs I, to happen. I think that's one thing you can be encouraged about in this game, especially with Carl Anthony Towns. No, the, the, the point total was not ideal for this game, but he only took two threes and he took nine shots. Yes. And the five that he made was mostly outside the one three he made. He made four in the paint. Right. They started off with Drew Holiday on him. Remember, we were wondering yeah, well, that. Drew Holiday got that assignment, and we were like, yo, we were moaning and groaning, like, yo, he got to go to work. So he did have some opportunities to go to work against Holiday and against Al Horford. So I, I was encouraged with his offense. We just need a little more. Yeah, I think for what they need to do is to go to him as much as they go to Brunson doing that more like outside in inside out so that way they can just offset the defense because i think this team is what they're, they're going to have to do the same thing that boston does which is put up a lot of threes that they're going to compete but if you're not going to have that guy who's going to be lodged in the paint creating that like that double and triple team is going to make it difficult for guys like og who are great from the corner when they have a wide open look bridges who can be probably better if he has a wide open look so that's something that tom thibodeau has to tweak the offense like i said 
It's not sellers remorse, Maria. Don't, don't worry about going that direction. I'm just saying maybe we got to do a little bit more traditional stuff. Work the post a little bit. Maybe we got to go back to the 90s. Got to get to it. And go get to the post. Let's go to Rambo on the Discord. Rambo, go ahead and I'll meet your mic. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Am I live? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. How you doing, bro? I'm doing fantastic right now, man. Beautiful game, man. Listen, scratch everything what y'all talking about, man. I ain't trying to hear that. This is the same story as last year. Do not forget it, man. They got to shoot astronomically from the three-pointer just to beat us. I love that. 48% and they was chucking the threes at the end. You bring that down to, what, 37%? That's like what, a three-point game for us right there, man. I'm good right now. I'm beautiful, man. This is like a this is like a, a, a game of three car Monty on the street right now, man. This is a hustle <laughs> game right here. <laughs> this, yeah. that, that's all this is. This is a hustle game right here. We finna hustle, man. We finna Yo, hustle Rambo, we got this. hustled by sixty points from three, man. So what? So what? what, what, what so what? <laughs> Hold on, Rambo. How, right. how are you lowering their percentage after? How'd you say they went from 47% to 37%? We take out the threes at the end. Their percent goes up, not down. No, no, no. What, what I'm saying here, let, let, let me clarify. Oh. What I'm saying is, is if you bring them back down to earth, because in a seven game series, okay, you okay. Shoot, you, you, you're not going to shoot 50% okay. in, in, in four games in a row. Okay. But if you bring them back down to earth, they about 37% by like some of what we shot today. Like, that's like. That's like a three-point game gotcha. right now. So, so you think it's not sustainable by them? It's not sustainable. This is this is the same. This is nothing new. This is the same thing I've been preaching last year. You can pull up the clips because this is what happened right around Christmas time, right around that OG trade, and I kept saying it. I'm not scared of those teams. I'm not scared of this team. I'm not scared of nobody right now. We got some things we need to work on. Mikhail needs to realize he, he is playing for the other New York team which we require hustle in the first half and the last half, okay? We don't like to play catch-up. We don't like that. So he needs, to, he needs to get that mindset on there. And you know what? I'm going to double down on my preseason tape. I don't believe Hart should be starting, man. Mm. I don't. I don't like it. What you, 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 like you, it. Well, obviously, you like what Deuce did tonight. So you're saying you want Deuce in there? I'm not saying I want Deuce in this. You see, nice. every, you guys say that Deuce is taking over Dante's role. Dante was a starter. I I, I expect Mikhail to take over that role. Deuce is doing the role that, that we we wanted quickly to do. You understand? So for me, Deuce is doing what he's supposed to be doing. I want another big yeah, man in there to bang that. in the paint. Another big man to bang in the paint with Cat. Because I see Cat out there, he's getting his rebound. He's doing what he's doing. So basically, but, you want you know, Mitch back. You want Mitch. You 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 want the block Ness monster back. You, you know what I want? And listen, go ahead, y'all get your tomatoes ready. This is who I want started. I want Jericho Sims started because oh my God. I'm gonna have. Oh, 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 and listen, oh, oh. you did not ask for Jericho no, no, no. Sims. You did not ask for Jericho Sims right now. Come on. Come on, Rambo. Rambo, Rambo, come on, Rambo. Rambo. Come on. Oh, hey. Yo, we fixed come the audio. Come on, man. We, we fixed the audio for that? <laughs> <laughs> Might as Rambo, well just leave you want Tim started for right now? Leave it troubleshooting. Oh, <laughs> like, we Rambo. Didn't fix the audio. Rambo, you, you, might get your, you, you might get your first catch up oh, of all time. Oracle oh, Sims bro. starting in a championship. Yeah. We're trying to justify him even having a role on the team, and you're talking about starting. Wow. We're trying to make it in the NBA. He's trying to figure out if he could be. But, but until Precious gets back, that's who I got. Because until Precious gets back, that's that's the only person I have and able to do that. Bring up post 40 into the rotation. Because at this point in time, he's doing the same thing that Hardy's doing out there in the start of rotation. Nothing. But get, you know, we, at least we can get some rebounds out of him. And I, I, at this point, I just I, I don't have no answer for. It. I don't like Hart starting, man. I need Hart coming off the bench with Deuce, man. I don't know that that's what I need. Jericho, Jericho's yeah, not a better rebounder Jericho's than is. than Hart. No. You know, this is what I'll say about Josh Hart. There is nobody a better rebounder, the same height as him. Right. But once he gets somebody with the same drive and the same hustle as him, that is bigger than him. He gets overmatched in, in, in that in that specific area. He, he, he gives so much more to the team 
but he's not able to do that in that start of rotation because he diverts too much. That's why you see him with these nice, easy 12 points, and we're like, oh, we like that. But he's not, he, he can't, he can't give that in that start of rotation. He gave us a few, a few first points at the start of the game, and I was like, oh, yeah, then you go get more aggressive. But then he goes to defer to, to get who? Mikhail open. Oh, let's go ahead, get, get Mikhail. Mikhael goes 0 for 5 for us. It's like, come on, man. Stop deferring and go get your bucket. If that's what, you know, that's what we need. If, if you want to defer so much, get out the start of rotation. You know, this is what I'm going to say here is that there's a few reasons why I can't see Jericho since even being part of the starting rotation. One, I will go with Tom Thibodeau and who he trusts. He trusts Josh Hart with his credit card, his wife, his wife insurance, anything more than what Jericho Sims has right now. So Sims. Th- so so Rambo, Josh Hart. On, man. Josh Hart's gonna stay in that rotation until Precious comes back. You want to see Precious come back? Jer- Josh Hart. I'd rather have Josh, Josh Hart in there though because look, at least I know. Hustle wise, understanding the schematic wise, that's who he is. Wow. I would get I would get Jericho uh, Sims out there as a deer in the head white though. Come on, I Rambo. The only reason why I say Sims is because I am I'm fully aware of the situation we're in. Precious is hurt. If Precious wasn't hurt, I would say start Precious, but that's the only reason why I'm saying Sims. But, I th- but to your point, I th- I still think we stick with Josh Hart, man. He, with until if you want to even see that, you should ha- want Josh Hart. And then when Precious returns, you can have that. Co- I feel like we can have that conversation. Maybe Precious goes in there and put Josh Hart back on the bench because he could be that type of energizer bunny there and so forth. But ain't no way do I want to see Jericho Sims in that starting five. Also, you know what? No way. <laughs>